Hi, it's Robin. Every so often I get some optimization tips on my videos from well-meaning commenters who want to help us all be more efficient. And a common one is that when I'm doing some basic programming that I should be using integer variables instead of floats to help speed things up. That sounds like a good idea. Let's give it a try. Okay, so I'm using my Commodore 128D. I have my Super Snapshot cartridge plugged in. I'm going to try changing the cursor color to white by pressing Control 2. This came up uh, in the comments here, and I also did a bit of a poll on Twitter, and everybody seemed in favor of me giving this a try. So we're going to do that today. If I forget during a, a part of this video to change the color, though, we're just going to have to live with it. I've been sticking with the default colors for 35 years now, so it might be a hard habit to break. Okay, so normally in Commodore Basic, you got something... Uh, you have your variable, like you just go a equals 5, and that same variable could be 5.5, because the default, the regular variables in Commodore Basic are floating point. Commodore Basic also allows for integer variables, and you identify them by putting a percentage sign afterwards. So if you set a percent, a integer, to 5, it's 5, but if you go up and change it to, say, 5.5 and print A, it's still 5 because an integer is only whole numbers. You can't represent fractions, decimals, decimal point with an integer variable. Okay, so let's try and set a benchmark like we've done in past episodes. We do this with the, the built-in time function which we initialize by saying the ti string to six zeros. And then we do a loop like for i equals one to a thousand. It's quicker to leave the spaces out, but we're not trying to optimize the whole program here. We're setting up a loop to execute a line of code a thousand times is what I like doing. And as long as that stays the same between different benchmarks, it's fine. So we can put the spaces in when I remember to improve readability. And then the actual benchmark is going to be, we're just going to try increasing x by one each time. And we're just going to use a regular float variable. Next, 50. And then we're going to print out ti which is the number of jiffies, 60ths of a second. I've dealt with this in previous episodes. I'll put a link down below to that one. I won't go into it with in much detail here. And then just to make sure we got the right result, I'll also print out the final result from X here. So what we expect is a thousand iterations of X equals X plus one, and we should get a thousand back at the end along with the time in jiffies it took. Here we go. I'll probably fast forward this. That didn't take long. So it took 239 jiffies to count up to a thousand with a floating variable. Okay, so we're just going to modify the program slightly here to use the integer variables. And of course, we want to print that out again here. And we'll run that again. And we'll see how much time we save. Well, that was slower. Using integer variables in C64 Basic, it's not done much, and the reason they're not well known is because they're not very good. They're actually, bizarrely, slower than floating point variables. If you've done programming in other languages, such as C or, well, pretty much any other language, if you have integers and floats, integers will be faster because they're a lot closer to the native representation for your processor. For example, you have a 16-bit integer, and the math behind manipulating that is much simpler in assembly language, or in machine language, than the code required to deal with floating point variables. But still, we'll, we'll experiment a little bit more with this. So you might think it's slow because you're mixing different variable types here. So Let's instead add the same type of variable together. We'll set y to 1 instead. And now we're going to change the actual loop. So 
So we should have exactly the same output, but now we're adding float variables to float variables. And then after, we'll do the same with integer variables. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, 219. So it's actually faster to add two variables together than to add a variable with a constant like the number one. And in fact, it's even quicker. The longer your constant number is, the more savings you get when you use a variable instead, because it takes longer to parse that constant over and over again, which is what Commodore Basic does. So we're going to switch all of these to integer variables. Okay, will it be faster with integer variables? Answer is no, it's even slower. So what's going on? C64 basic, while the variables themselves are stored as integers, whenever any operation is performed on them, it's converted to float first, then the math is done, and then it's converted back to integer. And that's why it takes so long. Now, why is this done this way? Presumably it's because they had to keep the basic code down to that roughly 8k that they squeezed it into. And there's actually a little bit of it in the kernel area as well. That has another 8k ROM. Presumably the most important thing when they were making this basic was that it did handle floats because some other early microcomputer basics did not handle float. And that was a very big limitation. And they couldn't dedicate the extra code space to integer dedicated math routines. So this was the strange solution they came up with. I don't know about that for sure. Maybe there's somebody who's a, a proper <laughs> basic historian who can give us the complete story. Now, it's also being suggested that we could optimize by using integers in the for next loops. We'll give that a try. Okay, so we'll just do a regular loop like this. That prints the numbers 1 through 10. I'm actually not bothering to benchmark this. You might notice that. Because watch this. So instead, we're just going to start using an integer variable. Okay, are you ready? Syntax error in line 10. What's going on here? Where's the syntax error? Well, as it turns out, you actually cannot use an integer variable as the index in a for next statement, which seems bizarre if you've done some C programming where ints are the absolute staple of your for next loop. If we look here in our handy C64 programmer's reference guide, page 47, the 4-2 step, it actually does specify here, you must specify certain parameters, the floating point variable name. So it actually is spelled out here. I had a bit of discussion online about this, and it seems likely that the reason that you can only use a floating point variable is because of this optional step parameter. You actually can use fractional steps. Presumably that's part of why they insisted that it was a float or just saving memory space. I don't know. I was pretty shocked to learn about that, about the for next loop. So the question becomes, are ints good for anything in C64 basic? And I know of a couple reasons. If you have any others, please add them in the comments below. One minor advantage to them, well actually it's kind of major if you use the special case, some C64 basic compilers, which were made by third parties, that they weren't included with, with your Commodore, only the interpreted basic was. If you had a basic compiler, some of them did have optimized integer math routines. While you would not see any improvement and while coding your program in Commodore basic, when you went to compile it, you would actually get a good gain. So. That's one reason that mattered to some people. I actually frequently used a basic compiler called Blitz in the days before I made the transition to machine language when I was still coding C64 basic games, but they weren't fast enough. Another minor use would be, so again, I'll just set up a benchmark program here. 
So for example, if you know you're going to be using the int function a lot, which takes a float and drops the fractional part, and you could either assign that to an integer variable or just back into the float. So say you had pi 3.14159265, like so. Next. So I'm not saying this is a practical example, but let's just use the int function quite a few times. Again, I may fast forward this. Okay, so that took quite a while, 2,262 jiffies. Instead, let's assign that to an integer variable. And now we'll run that. Okay, so it's a very small amount, but it is actually faster to make the assignment to the integer variable than to use the int function. I'm not saying that's a good, adv <laughs> a major advantage. Maybe somebody can make some use of that to squeeze a tiny bit of speed out. Actually, while we're in here, I think a lot of people don't know that there's a Pi symbol on the C64 keyboard. Well, they might know it's there. It's a cute little thing, eh? And if you print it, it actually is the constant for pi, well, to, what is that, eight decimal places. So we can actually put that in. Let's just try running that program again. So you see how extremely fast the pi constant is compared to Commodore Basic having to parse that float each time through that loop. It reduced 2200 cycles down to 156. And actually, let's try it with the int function just for fun. And you see actually the integers quite a bit faster, 25% faster in this case. So, I don't know. So those are the two small advantages, the compiler and how an integer variable kind of has a built-in int function, which, I don't know, might be useful to somebody. Okay, and there is one fairly big advantage, and this is the last thing I'm going to go through today. You can actually save a lot of RAM by using integer variables, but it might not be what you first think. We're actually just going to have to explain a function built into the C64 called free. Now, it actually requires a dummy variable in there, and it'll print. There's a couple quirks here. This is actually reporting back the number of bytes we have free, but it's a negative number. And it seems that when this function was first made, it's used on the PET, which had a maximum of 32K of RAM, then the VIC-20, which had roughly a 32K limit as well, 35K. So you would probably never see that negative number. But on the C64, as I think we've talked about before, they never bothered to upgrade the C64 ROMs from the VIC-20 and the 64K of RAM is so much that the large number that's returned is interpreted as a signed value. It's at 32,768, which has the high bit set. It's interpreted as a negative number. So you can actually fix that by printing free and adding 65536. So you find out we actually have 38,909 bytes free. So if you want to use this programmatically, but you have to add that number when the number is negative. So for example, something like, you know, RAM free is equal to free zero. And then if R is less than zero, then R equals R plus 65536. And then print out how much is free. Okay. So we got about 38k free there. But actually, that's a bit of a pain. We can improve this a little bit. So this is a big aside about reporting the free memory. So in Commodore Basic, you can actually get a value back from a less than or greater than, for example, is 1 greater than 0, and you get a negative 1 back. Negative 1 represents true in C64 Basic. You might expect it to be positive 1, but it's negative one. And if I'll do if one is less than zero, no. So zero is false, as you might expect, and negative one is true. And we can use this to our advantage 
to do some math as kind of as if you're using an if then statement, but to just build it in as part of a mathematical equation. Okay, we're going to use a feature of C64 Basic that doesn't get used much. We're going to define a function, and you actually can create your own functions in C64 Basic, but they can't contain any actual logic. They are just mathematical equations, but we can use that less than or greater than symbol and the way it returns a negative one or a zero to add some sort of conditional logic to it. So when you're defining it, you use the DEF and then FN for function, and then you give it a variable name. And that's the name of the function, but it can just be one letter, two letters, a letter and a number. Well, it can be longer, but basic only recognizes the first two. So we're going to call it FR for free. And then you must pass one variable, even if you're not going to use it. And then you can use any mathematical functions you wish in it. So we're going to use that free function. And then we're going to, we're going to subtract 65536 times, we're again going to check the value free and see if it's less than x. Now, actually I'm using x here. Maybe this makes it more confusing. It could just be, it, the free function can actually be just any value like zero. It's just a dummy value. Functions in Commodore Basic require one parameter whether you use it or not. Even the ones built into the operating system have that restriction. I assume it was just to save a bit of ROM space in the code. But it's just a small optimization where I found if you use x as your variable throughout instead of zeros, as we've seen before, that just runs a little faster. So that's why I'm doing that. This is checking if the value that is returned from free is less than zero, a negative number, then, then this term in the brackets will return a negative one, which is then multiplied by negative 65536, becomes positive 65536, and then it will add that value to make our function return a positive number in both cases. If it's less than 32k free, or if it's greater, it'll return the proper positive number either way. And now we're just going to set up a bit of a benchmarking program again. We're looking to see how much RAM float variables versus integer variables use. So we're just going to define two variables ahead of time that we're going to use to check the amount of free RAM before and after our operation. And we're going to get the free amount R1, that stands for RAM sample one, I suppose, gets the amount of free RAM. By the way, we're defining these variables ahead of time so that they don't influence the amount of RAM that is used in our benchmark. They're already predefined. Whether or not that's necessary, I'm just doing this for a bit of clarity. At least it makes it more clear to me. If you try and make your basic programs look tidier, you probably already know that you can use the rem command to just leave like a mostly blank line but you can even use a colon on a line to just hold that line and to make your listings look a little bit more pretty, uh, almost like putting a blank line in a modern language. Okay, and we're just gonna define a variable like a equals five, and then another blank line, just to set off that this line 40 is what we're actually benchmarking. 50, and we're gonna take sample two, and so you just have to put that fn to indicate that you're going to use a function, a user-defined function. And again, we'll take the free RAM, and then we're simply going to print out r1 minus r2. Okay, we'll do a listing, and let's run that and see how much RAM just defining float variable a5 is. Okay, it uses 7 bytes. And if we want to like use a few variables here, 6 and c equals 7 and we run that 21 bytes so it's 7 bytes per floating variable so how much do integers use there we go we'll run that 7 bytes the same this is another oddity in 
Commodore Basic is that all simple variable types, well, integers and floats, use seven bytes each. Even though the integer variable does not need that many, it just leaves some of those seven bytes blank. And I believe, again, this was done to save not runtime RAM, but to save code in memory and to simplify the logic of looking up the variables. They're just simply jumping by seven bytes at a time as they're trying to find the definition for each variable. But there is a major place where they do save memory. We'll look at that now. We're just going to replace this with, we're going to make a float array, a big one, like a two-dimensional array of 50 times 50. How much memory does that use? 13 kilobytes, roughly. Float variables, the actual data part uses five bytes per number. So if we multiply 51, we dimension the array to 50, but that's actually zero based. So there's 51 locations times 51 times five bytes. And you see we get a very similar number and there's nine bytes of overhead involved with that. So that's how much RAM is used in a float. This may be what we're looking for here. So 13K for float variables. Let's change that to an integer array and run that. Only 5K and that's basically got 51 locations times 51 locations in this two dimensional array times two bytes per integer again, there's just a nine byte difference for the same overhead. So finally, <laughs> we have found a major advantage to using integer variables in this particular case when you're using them in an array. Fortunately, Commodore Basic does something smart here. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.